You know, this could be a really positive experience for you guys. There's a wonderful and exciting world out there when we discover that we don't need TV to entertain us. <laughs> he said anus. <laughs> entertain us, ain't it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Well, who doesn't like old Beavis and Butthead, but really, come on, is anyone that stupid? Climate gate set to break wide open. New developments today involving those hacked emails from Britain suggesting scientists are fudging data to make their case for global warming. Climate deniers have been making a lot of noise about a set of stolen emails from one of the world's leading climate centers, the University of East Anglia. The spin they're putting out is that the emails reveal what they've always suspected, an evil global conspiracy. I'm just going to read brief excerpts from three of them. Here's the first. Number one says, look, we can't account for the lack of warming at the moment, and it is a travesty that we can. Well, that's self-explanatory. Uh, that's really suggesting that the evidence isn't there. We don't know what's going on with this. As usual, there's less here than meets the eye. The email, written by leading climate scientist Kevin Trenberth, contained a cherry-picked sentence that climate deniers wanted desperately to mean what it doesn't. Sharp-eyed investigators began to apply a seldom-used analytical technique. They actually read the email. The conservative Economist magazine, in assessing the message, wrote that to take this as evidence that Dr. Trenberth questions global warming seems foolish. He knows that the climate has natural ups and downs imposed on such trends and that cold snaps happen. He is expressing frustration that the monitoring needed to understand how these variations work is not as good as it could be. The journal Science agreed with the assessment, noting it was obvious that Dr. Trenberth was bemoaning something else. The observing system we have is inadequate for tracking energy flow through the climate system. Dr. Trenberth's area of study is to account for the flow of energy into and out of the atmosphere, a global accounting process that he takes seriously. By design, the climate denier media machine neglected to report on the few sentences right before the now famous quotation. There, Dr. Trenberth mentions a paper explaining his views. As always, we'll take time to look it over. 2008 was the ninth warmest year in the instrumental record, but still somewhat cooler than the preceding years. In the paper, Dr. Trenberth notes that the shift from an El Nino warming to a La Nina cooling was the primary reason, not a pause in climate change, but just knowing that is not enough. He urges scientists to take a deeper look at how to account for the heat flows in that complex global system. Was it because a lot of heat went into melting the Arctic sea ice or parts of Greenland and Antarctica? Was it because the heat was buried in the ocean well below the surface? Was it because La Nina rearranged the configuration of ocean heat? Perhaps all of these things going on. Given that global warming is unequivocally happening, to plan for and cope with the effects of climate change requires information on what is happening and why. In this paper, Dr. Trenworth is pushing his fellow scientists to keep digging for more precise information because future generations will need better science to cope with climatic change. In other words, he's doing his job. <laughs> he said enough. <laughs> Another message has come in for equally inane distortion. Number three, a little more, more complex, but listen to this. I've just completed Mike's nature, uh, Mike's nature trick of adding in the real temps for e to each series for the last 20 years, i.e. from 1981 onwards, and from 1961 for Keith to hide the decline. That seems like deliberately changing the data to suit your, your, suit your way. Mike's nature trick refers to Michael Mann, one of the world's leading paleoclimate experts. Dr. Mann is famous for his reconstruction of global temperatures over the recent millenniums, the famous hockey stick graph. The graph uses a number of indicators of past temperatures, including ice cores, corals, historical records, and tree rings. The tree rings presented a difficulty for climate scientists. Since 1880, we have a reliable record of instrumental temperature observations. 
During most of that time, tree ring data tracked closely with instrumental temperatures. But around 1960, the trees diverge from the actual temperature. No one knows why, but theories range from drought, temperature change, to pollution or acid rain. The problem has been widely discussed in the technical literature. Dr. Mann's challenge was to come up with a way to smoothly meld the divergent temperature data from tree rings in with the more accurate instrument data. The trick is to make sure the graph was based on the more reliable actual temperatures and phase out the tree rings. The phrase, hide the decline, does not refer to temperature, but rather to the divergence of the tree ring data. But why let a fact get in the way of a good talking point? Mr. Jones talked to Mr. Mann about the trick of adding in the real temps to each series to hide the decline in temperature. In other words, an outright fraud. Yesterday we showed you the messages between the scientists bragging about climate tricks used to hide the decline in temperatures. They talked about hiding the decline in temperatures of the last half of the last century. <laughs> he said enough. <laughs> Man's hockey stick was, of course, the center of a controversy. But in 2006, the National Academy of Science affirmed the hockey stick as essentially accurate. Man's use of tree rings especially has been criticized by deniers. But you don't need tree rings to make a hockey stick. Temperature graphs have been constructed using boreholes, corals, and stalagmites from caves. Temperature graphs from NASA, NOAA, and even the Japan Meteorological Association reach very similar results. But the idea that the globe has been cooling is an article of faith for climate deniers. What's ironic is that the few remaining climate scientists with actual credentials who question the seriousness of climate change still have to admit what the data shows. I think when we made that correction, I, if I'm remembering correctly, I think we went from a, a cooling trend to a slight warming trend. And then ever since then, it's been a warming trend, um, actually by sort of ever-increasing amounts. When somebody says that there's no such thing as warming, well, I can squirm. Yes. Yeah. It's hard to look, look at all those records and entertain that. How can you argue with thermometers? Yeah. I don't argue with thermometers. So the planet is warming about 0.14 degrees C per decade right now. Okay. In the wake of the media flap, major scientific authorities are weighing in. The American Meteorological Society reaffirmed its longtime support for the consensus around global climate change. In a strongly worded editorial, the prestigious journal Nature noted that the stolen emails revealed no scientific conspiracy. And to these denialists, the affair was proof that researchers have sought to suppress evidence. This paranoid interpretation would be laughable were it not for the fact that obstructionist politicians in the U.S. Senate will probably use it next year as an excuse to stiffen their opposition to the country's much-needed climate bill. Committed crusaders against science will not be swayed by evidence, but there's still more to say on this topic for those who want to hear, which I'll present in the next Climate Denial Crock of the Week. <laughs> Have you guys heard a word I've said? Uh, yeah. Anus. <sighs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I heard it too. <laughs> Some people are dumb. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs>